end of the day, like we hit, we see the defense busting the for us, and I think we just as an offense we have to look at those guys and hold ourselves accountable. Like, like are we really doing everything we can to really help those guys out? Because I know it's frustrating for them. I feel for those guys at times too. Thirty-one and a half points. That is currently the over/under for Saturday's spooky matchup between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Northwestern Wildcats. This will be the lowest over-under total in college football history if it holds until game day. Last week, the line suggested that the Hawks would lose by 30. Now this week, the question is whether or not we'll even see 30 points scored. Hello everyone and welcome back to your number one source for Hawkeye sports. I'm your host Michael Merrick and today we're going to tell you everything you need to know before the kickoff. This week, Iowa takes on the lacking Northwestern Wildcats. Northwestern enters this game at an abysmal 1-6 record, having lost six straight. And while the Wildcats have won three straight in Kinnick Stadium dating back to 2016, Northwestern hasn't won a game on American soil in over a year. Their last win came October 16, 2021 over Rutgers. And once Iowa fans hear about the Wildcats quarterback situation, they may feel a great sense of familiarity. Northwestern made a quarterback change this past week. Well, I guess Jay, I should say I finalized quarterback change this past week going to Brendan Sullivan, even though Ryan Helinski was active and healthy for the game. Uh, and I think there's something Northwestern fans were wondering, was Helinski ever going to get benched because he kind of looked like the same player the last two years, not really athletic uh, or dynamic outside of the pocket. He made some very questionable decisions, some late reads, really no pocket presence at all. And uh, Fitzgerald finally pulled the trigger on Sullivan. Hawkeye fans, however, can't say the same about a finalized decision being made at QB. As of now, Coach Ferentz says that no decision will be made until later in the week, but hopefully Iowa will follow the Wildcats' decision and go to the backup quarterback. While Petrus may not be the main issue, something needs to change and he is the face of the offense. The same offense that has yet to score a touchdown in their last 28 offensive possessions. Granted, Padilla was under center for a few of those drives, but still, there were six consecutive quarters of football with Petrus at the helm, and there were zero offensive touchdowns to be seen. And that's just inexcusable. To cut Petrus and the Hawkeyes offense some slack, though, the last three defenses the Hawks have played currently all rank within the top five in the nation in scoring defenses. And all four of their losses have come against defenses ranked within the top six in the nation. This week, they take on a Northwestern defense that is in the bottom half of the country in scoring defense. But the Wildcats do have a star defensive lineman in a Timwa Atabore. The Kansas City native currently sits at sixth in the Big Ten in sacks and third in forced fumbles. And with the Hawkeyes' struggles on the offensive line so far this season, don't be shocked if you hear Atabore's name all game long. Best player on the defense, without a doubt, is Atatamwa Atabore. The defensive end, he's kind of rotated a little bit inside and outside this year. He was on Bruce Feldman's freak list before the season. I saw something from Jordan Reed of ESPN saying that maybe he could go in the third or fourth round. was kind of viewed as like a fringe draft player before the year. But he has consistently gotten pretty good pressure and disrupted the quarterback in the backfield, made a lot of stops. He's always been a good run defender. So Adebare is, is really the anchor to this defensive line. And the Wildcats offense has also faced their offensive struggles this season and even dating all the way back to last year. But one player that has stood above the rest for Northwestern has been running back Evan Hull. Hull currently leads the Wildcats in rushing yards and in receptions. And Hull is even within 13 yards of leading Northwestern in receiving yards as well. He's already passed 1,000 yards from scrimmage so far this season. And last week, Hull would have a monstrous performance, putting up over 100 rushing yards, and he would even bring in a receiving touchdown, too. It's clear that the key to slowing down Northwestern is stopping their dynamic dual threat back. Um, again, they, just, they have a really good running back. You know, it's very dynamic and uh, behind a good offensive line. Evan Hull, he's been one of the most productive running backs in the country statistically um, with both the pass game and the run game. He's used a lot in screens and he's just an extremely difficult player to tackle in the open field. Not really the biggest or necessarily the fastest, but he, he's very shifty. When Northwestern goes, Evan Hull goes. That's one of the only reasons why Northwestern was in the game against Maryland. Now let's bring in Daily Iowan assistant sports editor Chris Werner from the newsroom. Chris, this is a game that is not expected to be geared towards the offensive minded fan, but can we expect the unexpected and see Alex Padilla turn this offense around? You know what? Al Michael said he believes in miracles, but this week I don't. I think that Alex Padilla is a better option at quarterback this week, but he is not going to turn this whole offense around. Uh, as Kirk Ferentz likes to say all the time, it's 11 guys on every play. 
and the offensive line in particular has struggled this year, and I don't see those struggles stopping anytime soon. So he might, Padilla might allow for more mobility uh, on broken plays, which might uh, lead to more yardage on those plays, but he is not going to turn this offense around this week. Yeah, sadly, I think the issues on offense are much more than just who takes those snaps under center. But at the same time, we can say the same thing about the team across the field this weekend. Chris, what have you seen from Northwestern since they made their QB change? Well, they were uh, much, much more competitive than I thought they would be against Maryland last week. Uh, only a one possession loss. They were in it uh, until the end. And a lot of that has to do with uh, Brendan Sullivan, uh, the new quarterback they put in. He hasn't thrown for a lot of yards, only 257 combined over the last two games. But he does have, does have a completion percentage that's over 70%. So he's going to complete a lot of passes. There are going to be a lot of short yardage. And the Iowa defense is going to be tasked with stopping Evan Hull in the, in the uh, open field a lot of times because that's where Fitzgerald wants his offense to run through. It'll definitely be interesting to see how Sullivan handles the fans here in Kinnick Stadium on homecoming for sure. But Chris, here is the primetime moment. I know you are an Evanston native, so you do have a little bit of a soft spot for these Wildcats. But who do you see winning this game and how do you see it playing out? I think it's going to be 13 to 10 Iowa. Barring any pick sixes or defensive scores, I think the offense will get 13 points. Iowa's offense will get 13 points. They're going to stop. Northwestern to only 10. If that, I think it might be even lower scoring for the Cats than uh, double digits. But yeah, it's going to be everything everybody expects. I think it's going to be under that 31 and a half point uh, over under that you mentioned earlier in the show. The totals 23, 13 and 10 Iowa. You can you can mark that down. I told you. <laughs> Well, personally, I have an offensive explosion in my mind. I believe in Halloween miracles, and I think the Hawks somehow find a way to put up 28 points. And they take this one 28 to 3, so they still get that under. But that may be my hopeless optimism getting in the way. <laughs> so thank you, Chris, and thank you for tuning in to another edition of Before the Kickoff. Be sure to check out the Daily Iowa YouTube page and website for all the latest on Hawkeye sports. From the University of Iowa, I'm Michael Merrick, and have a wonderful weekend of football, everyone.